Hey everybody, Jeff Yenser, creativemusicgenius.com. And today I want to share how to use the circle of fifths as a cheat sheet for songwriting and creative music ideas. It's also helpful if you like to just do covers or jam with your friends. It teaches you what are the fundamental chords in any key and what chords are going to sound good in any given key. Now I'm also going to share a few tips for coloring outside the lines using advanced chords chord substitutions and key changes. Now this is my modified circle of fifths. I kind of just made this up myself and just as a side note there's been a lot in the news lately about plastics in the ocean and in the fish and getting into our bodies and Earth Day was just like a week ago and how can we take better care of the earth and why not just use plastic for something good and constructive that you can make something out of. So I, this is, I call this my spinning Romans because it's got these Roman numerals in there. You can see, you know, uppercase and lowercase and they're, they're also here under the scale and they're, those are the chord symbols. On the circle of fifths, you got C at the top with no flats, no sharps. If you go up this, these uh, key of C, five notes, C, D, E, F, G, that's called an interval of a fifth, so it's a fifth from C to G, and it just is up a fifth, up a fifth, all the way around. You can go round and round, spinning in a circle, going up in an interval of a fifth every time. And you see G has one sharp by it, and I just drew an arrow. I like to keep my uh, presentation real simple and uh, uncluttered, so I know that this has two sharps, this has three, and they increase till they get down to F sharp, and then flats on this side one flat in F, and then it just increases two, three, and so on, till it gets down to the last one I have written there. And also, these have other names, but I want to keep it uncomplicated. You could call that C sharp. So this way, you go up in a fourth. C, D, E, F. One, two, three, four. So the one, two, three, four, we talk about these Roman numerals as the chord symbols. So if you look at C, and you look one to the right and one to the left, you see you've got F and G, and they're all major chords. In fact, this is the one, four, five progression. Now this is a very common progression in music. In fact, if you look up three chord songs on the internet, you'll get a huge list of songs that are just three or maybe four chords, and most of them are based primarily on these chords. You could go one, four, five all day long. Now, me and my friends used to hang out at the Blueberry Patch and do the after jams after hours. We sat around with acoustic guitars because we couldn't have amplified music anymore because of the sound ordinance after 11, so we were jamming out and somebody would start playing DCG, DCG over and over and over, but we'd go through about 10 or 15 different songs, and they're good songs. These songs are no slouch just because they have a simple chord progression, right? So anyways, after a while someone would say, hey man, let's play something besides DCG, <laughs> right? So anyhow, um, you can see how the one, the four and the five can be your fundamental chords. Now if you just look um, past the G, the next three slots, D, A, and E, those are your minor chords. You see in here, that's the two chord, one, two, C to D, and that's a D minor, and then three is E minor, and then you got four, five, and six at A minor, and this is a diminished seventh, which is the B. Now all you gotta do is take this thing and spin it and point it to any key, and it automatically is gonna tell you what the one, the four, and the five, and uh, all the chords are. Okay, so uh, that's truly handy, and these can also be looked at as keys, as chords, or notes of the scale. So if you're in the key of C, all these notes that have a, ro a Roman numeral next to them are good in that scale, and they're gonna sound good and natural in that scale. And you can always go and color outside the lines in your music. So once you know the fundamental chords, you know, write those down, jam those out, Play your guitar, or your keyboard, or your app, or whatever you got. Play around with the chords, then start getting advanced and throwing in like sus fours and add nines and seventh and major seventh. And you know, get a chord dictionary. There's tons of them in there, and uh, just experiment. If I'm in the key of C, I might trade out a C major seventh for that. I might put in a G sus four over here, make that a D minor seventh. You know, whatever. Just 
I encourage you to experiment by just jamming around on your instrument, whether it's guitar or keyboard. You know, put on a rhythm track if you got some drums or a drum machine. Or... Alright, so the next creative tip is to use chord substitutions. You could use simple stuff. You know, chords that are outside of the key that you're currently in, like you could throw in a B flat, maybe you're an E flat, or change uh, minor to major, like use A major instead of minor. Mix it up a little bit. I'll tell you this, um, chords and notes that are close by usually sound best to the, to the main key. If you start to get way down here, way away from C, then it might not sound so good. But close by things just slide in there real easy because they share, like if you go over to F for example, shares some of the same chords with the key of C. It's an easy transition on the ear. And the other thing that you can do is to change key. And again, a nearby key, you could go from the key of C to the key of F, maybe to the B, key of B flat, maybe have a different key for the verse or the chorus, or maybe just slide into a key change ever so subtle for two or four bars just to change it up a little bit. Um, sometimes it blurs the lines between, you know, am I changing key or am I just throwing in a couple of out of key chords, you know? But it's all creative ideas that you can use. So you spin this around, you get your key, and you figure out what your chords are and then write some things down, jam some things out, get some ideas on paper or recorded, and then just play with them and see what sounds good and creative to you. I'm going to make some more videos because there's tons of information that can be extracted from the circle of fifths and we really didn't get into the scales. And you can tell that that's, uh, guess what key that is, right? If you guessed D with two sharps in it, you would be correct. F and C, right? And then it shows you all the chords, the roots, the roots of the chords. Jeff Yenser, creativemusicgenius.com. Thanks for watching.